Chad Cranfield. Well, this is a question I get quite a bit, and it's one that I've answered several times, but for the benefit of people that might not have ever heard it, what do you say to people when they say, well, aren't you just Camelites? Because it is a very popular question that I get from a lot of denominations. Yeah, it is a very popular question because of the position uh, Brother Campbell held in coming out of the Baptist Church and other denominations prior to that time after he came to this country from, uh, from Scotland, I believe it was. And he was very active in preaching and uh, throughout a greater part of the United States. And he was preaching, of course, salvation based on repentance, confession, and baptism faith, repentance, confession, and baptism. And uh, he did refer, he did uh, call his followers Christians and also the Church of Christ. They, they, they bore that name. And as a result, you know, a lot of people have, uh, have come up with the idea that every person who's a member of the church is, is a Camelite. I use this illustration. It's, it's kind of foolish, but I use it anyway. About a farmer that's planting a, a crop of corn and when he gets down to the road to turn around, he spills some kernels of corn and goes on about his job. And a day or two later, a goose comes along and picks up one of those kernels, carries it to the other side of a little branch and puts it down, and it, it grows. There's enough soil on it that it grows. Now, when that plant grows, is it going to produce corn or gooseberries? Well, everybody said, no, it's not going to produce gooseberries, but the goose is the one that carried it over there. Well, Campbell was the one that carried the gospel to a lot of people, carried the truth to a lot of people, and to say that you're a Camelite because you obeyed the gospel he preached would be like saying you became a follower of Peter because you obeyed the gospel on the day of Pentecost. Any other questions? I will say this, that's a lot less now than it used to be. Used to be, people really did come at you that way, but anymore, I, I don't get that question much anymore. Well, I'll have a question then along that same line. I don't ever hardly hear the word Campbellite used at all because uh, members of the church fought that name and they refused to wear it. But I hear a lot of members of the church identify themselves as Church of Christ people or Church of Christers or uh, say, well, he's a Church of Christ preacher. That's a Church of Christ college. Is that sectarianizing the name? If it's not, it's really close to it. I, I, I don't like that idea. I, I, you know, we, we, are the ch we belong to Christ. The church belongs to Christ. But I think we denominationalize ourselves when we talk about being a Church of Christ preacher or a Church of Christ people. You know, we're members of the body of Christ. We belong to Him. But we have, by using that phrase, I think you tend to, to do exactly what you suggest. You, you tend to denominationalize yourself. Wouldn't a better way to say it say, I'm just a Christian? Right. Uh, Roger Booth. Thank you, John. Uh, Ronnie, I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, I just had some questions there. I had one. You said that several times the church universal is not an organic body. And I just thought, I'd like to, what does that mean? And why is the church of Christ? Well, not it's not an organic body in the sense that you don't take the, the, here are thousands of people, thousands of people in the world. They're all members of the church. There's no organization to that. You've got people in Africa, you've got people in India, you've got people in America. There's, they belong to Christ. Christ is the head, and they belong to this universal body that has been saved through their obedience to the gospel. When you organize, you organize in a local body. You're an independent body here with elders and deacons and, and, and the authority of heaven. But there's, there is no, you know, what, what organization exists, for example, between us and, and the people in, in Africa? There is no organization between us except that we're brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're all subject to Jesus Christ. They have congregations over there that are organized like we have congregations over here that are organized. The congregations are organized. But I don't believe the universal church is an organic body in the sense that we can organize it. Thank you. I just, I think sometimes in my mind when I hear the word, the word organic, I wonder if that means life. But you're using a sense as organization. Of, 
organization. Oh, yeah. Um, then I had another question. How would the New Testament, we talked a little bit about a, con a denominational congregation that uh, had a woman preacher and the body, the organization, got rid of the congregation. So I just wanted to turn around. How would the New Testament church established by Christ deal with the congregation that decided to have a woman preacher? Okay, well, if, from congregation to congregation, there's no way. I mean, we don't, I don't have any, even if a congregation, let's say the congregation down where I live started letting a woman preach. As far as, 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 far as any disi uh, outward discipline, this church here at Columbia, they don't, you know, they can condemn what we've done. And they can say those brethren are doing an unscriptural work down there, but they don't have any authority over that church. You know, if the church wants to put in put a woman in the pulpit, she can do it, even though it's wrong. And for uh, now, uh, another congregation can refuse to extend fellowship. You know, a congregation can refuse to uh, support that church in any way. But as far as being in a position to go down and and. Uh, I don't know what, what phrase to use, run the church out of the country or put them out completely. We don't have that kind of authority. If it's congregations, we're, you know, we're independently ruled and independently governed. And if we were to set up, if we were to set up an organization where, for example, uh, th that happens, and, and I say, well, we've got to, uh, all the rest of the churches in America has got to withdraw from them. You know, I don't, there's no way to structure that that I see. Now, they can find out what they've done, and each church can make the decision. We're not going to have anything to do with them. But to have a, to have a, uh, reach some kind of a consensus and enforce it, I just don't see that that exists. Thank you. One last thing. Uh, would you just give a little bit of commentary for my benefit on 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13? 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. Okay, 12 and 13. For by one spirit we're all baptized into one body, where the Jews are Greeks, where the slaves are free, and have all been made to drink uh, into one spirit. I think by the, by the teachings of one spirit, the Holy Spirit, by the revelation of truth that came, we're all baptized into one body, because that's, we're instructed to do that. Whether we're a Jew or a Greek, or whether we're slave or free, and we've all been made to drink into the one spirit in the sense that we've all been made to accept, adopt, and embrace what the one spirit has revealed to us. John Elmore. It may be a little bit off of the topic, Ronnie, but uh, how does a congregation discipline a member if they choose float from congregation to congregation. You know, uh, think about that scripture says, obey them that have the rule over you. How can they do that if there's nobody, if they haven't consented to any rule? Yeah. You know, I, I, I brushed over that one point a while ago uh, about the obligation that people have to the local church. If we're members, the, the people, for example, who are members of this congregation, their primary obligation is to this church. That is their obligation. And if they just decide to float around and be somewhere one Sunday and somewhere else the next Sunday and detach themselves from this unit, then I believe, first of all, they need to be approached by the leadership and say, you know, we don't think this is good for you spiritually. It's not good for the church. You may still be worshiping, but you have an obligation here. We need you, and your obligation is here. If they refuse that, if they just refuse and they just continue to, to drift around, and this, now this may be a, <laughs> an eye-opening <laughs> conclusion, but I really believe the church is in a position and should take some kind of action and say, you know, we're going to, we can no longer use and recommend you unless you're going to come here and be a part of this organic body. And we're going to let other churches know if they ask that some of these places you're going that you're not fulfilling your duty as a member of this congregation. And we, we, we just can't, we can't tolerate that. So I do believe that there are some actions 
that can be taken short of withdrawal because if they're worshiping, they're going to come back and say, well, I worship every Sunday anyway somewhere else. And that's right. But they're not fulfilling their duty as a member of the local church. And I believe that is an obligation that every member has. Any other questions? Roger Boone. Don't take this wrong. I have respect for you, and I've got you up there where you can't run away. <laughs> Not that you want to run away, but I've got you right where I want you. So uh, I, I had an experience one time. I was in a place, far away country, and uh, I needed to go to a mission center by the name of Namuyang. And uh, on the outside of the Namuyang uh, place, they, the building says the Church of Christ. And while I was there, there were some folks from the United States, and there was a leader in that place. And they wanted to make sure that I knew, the people that were with me knew, that they were the headquarters of the Church of Christ in uh, that country, Zambia. They wanted me to know, and they were very adamant. Are they a denomination? I think so. You know, if they, if they think they're the headquarters of the Lord's Church in a certain country, they're denominational in their thinking and practice. Yeah, I believe so. Jimmy Cade. Now, if they don't know any better, you ought to try to teach them, but if they're, if they're definitely saying that's the way it is, I, I think that's wrong. Appreciate that, uh, Ronnie. In, uh, in your understanding, uh, I think we all agree, of course, that the Scriptures use... <coughs> The picture of the body, there's one body in reference to the universal church. But in your understanding, do you do you believe that the Bible refers to a local congregation using the figure of the body as well? Well, yes and no. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we are a part of the body of Christ. But I don't think any local church is the whole body of Christ. I think the, the, the phrase, the body of Christ, is a reference to the, to the church that Jesus built, which would be the universal church. We're a part of that body as, as, uh, you know, as a member of the church. But to say we are the body of Christ, I would, I would you know, I really would have problems with that. It, it, you know, just to, for example, if, if, I, if my, the connotation of my statement is... This church right here is the Church of Christ. Uh, I'm saying, really, we're not the full Church of Christ here. We're a part of it. We're a part of the Lord's Church. We're a local body. A local body of the Lord's Church is what we are. And in that sense, we are a Church of Christ. You can be a local body the lo uh, of Christ. You can be the local representative of the body of Christ. And you can scripturally say that, I believe. To leave the idea that you are the entire body of Christ, and I don't think anybody does that. I mean, I don't know if anybody does that. I think that would be misleading and mistaken. I, I think that what Jimmy might have reference to is over here in 1 Corinthians 12 and 27. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church of Corinth and he said, Now you, you'd think if he was talking about the whole bunch all over the world, he'd say we. He said, Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. In that locality, they were. Yeah. They were. But they did not comprise the entire body of Christ. They, com right. they comprised the body in that locality, just like you comprise the bride or you comprise the church in a locality. Johnny Elmore. Along that line, Ronnie, don't you think that a lot of harm has been done when people say, unless you're a member of the Church of Christ, you're going to hell? And they refer to a local body when what we mean is this body of right. Jesus yeah. or death. I think that's a distinction that really needs to be made because we, and not, not that it, you know, I, I think when people accuse us of being the, we think we're the only ones going to heaven. You know, that's what they say. And they, they're identifying with a group of people over on some little avenue in some town that may not be very large. Those people over there think, you know, we're talking about the entire body as being. Right. Yeah, I, I think that distinction needs to be made. Yeah. 
Jeremy Smith. You talked a little bit about the work of the church too, and by those identifying marks, uh, you would know, uh, you know, a denomination versus the uh, the church. Um, one of the things that um, really seems like it has uh, slipped in more and more is is the social gospel, and uh, it almost feels like when you oppose that, people make fun. Well, don't you don't you care about poor people, or don't you care about what happens to these folks? And so, um, what some just what some basic advice for combating that when when that attitude um, comes around and people are wanting to do things that really are getting pretty close to engaging in the social gospel. Well, that's a real good point, and it's a, it's a problem. Uh, here again, I think it's easy. Here, here's what happens. People, even in the church, lose sight of our duties and obligations when the denominations are doing all they're doing. They see the denominations feeding the poor, running this shelter for people who are, who are homeless, doing all these different things, you know. They fail to realize that the primary obligation for all that belongs to the individual Christian. We as individuals are the ones who need to be feeding the poor. We need to be. We have an obligation to our body. We have an obligation to the body of Christ to help the poor. We can never feed the world. The church of Christ, the church of the Lord, can never feed the world. But we do try to feed our own people who are hungry, care for our own people. I think there has to be a distinction made in the responsibility we have in caring for those people in need that are in the church and the people that are in need out in the world because there's no way we can take care of the people out in the world. It's, it's physically, financially impossible. And unless they recognize that distinction and difference, then it would be hard to, I guess, get them to see you know, what they really need to see. other questions? Any others? Brother, you have any closing statements? No, other than just to um, other than just to remind all of us the tremendous opportunities we have as the body of Christ and to not be ashamed of the place and position we occupy in the community and in the world and to meet what I believe to be a hungering, a spiritual hungering in society today for plain, pure, simple New Testament Christianity. And I think if we offer that to people, many of them will be able to see it because they, many people, are fed up with what's going on in denominationalism today. And in many so-called churches that are in, they've got ball teams, they've got gymnasiums, you're not. I heard two people talking the other day. Now, you didn't ask me to go on and on, but I'm going to go on and on. <laughs> I was with a group of people the other day, and the only thing they could talk about was the gymnasium they had and all the things that were being offered to people through their gymnasium. And that's really what people are looking for today, unfortunately, is a gymnasium and a food program and a retreat for women or men or children or whatever. And that really, none of it really is working church.